welcome to The Art Night. I'm your host, Sean Leonard. Some people call me Jux Sean Stapose, and I'm back doing The Art News. Uh, we actually went and visited in Times Square with Evan Preco, the editor-in-chief of Juxpose Magazine, uh, and he told us about the Juxpose newsstand that was happening there. Gave me an excuse to go to Times Square. So follow us along, here we go. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to a special edition of The Art Night. I'm your host, Sean Leonard. This is Evan Preco, the editor-in-chief of Juxpose Magazine. Uh, and we are here in Times Square because they have an installation and magazine stand set up in the center of Times Square. How are you, Evan? I'm doing very, very good today. Uh, it's been about eight straight days now in Times Square. Um, if you've ever spent five or more hours in Times Square, you'll know how I'm feeling right now. Can't even imagine. You have. Uh, the Juxtapose newsstand, set up here in Times Square. Uh, it's a pop-up of sorts, it's a newsstand for sure. Yeah, okay, so, I mean, by definition it was initially an art installation, and then kind of what ended up happening is, uh, at Scope Art Fair last year in Miami, Times Square Alliance, who's put on some great events here, saw it and wanted to bring it here. We kind of developed a timeline when we could do it, and it made sense in October with Comic-Con, and kind of tried to do it at the same time. And uh, so now we're selling magazines. We created a couple publications. The great people of Victory Journal we're working with. Um, and the artist, Kimu Grotesque Meyer, designed it in 2009. And now it's live. It's live. All right, this is the new issue of Juxtapose Magazine. Grotesque on the cover. And then Grotesque in real life. Grotesque, man. Very nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Two-time Juxtapose cover artist. He has the current cover of Juxtapose, which actually features an illustration of uh, the newsstand we see behind us. We didn't know what to expect. We knew that people would look at it being either disgusted or being, you know, kind of like, oh, wow, that drew me back in the day. We heard a lot of that kind of, you know, conversation uh, or critic passing by. We didn't know it was going to become kind of a, a hub for people to get a fix of culture, especially here, because it's really completely dead as far as culture. You know, there is like some content on the billboard that sometimes have some kind of like, you know, ad that has an artist. Well, once you go off, there's the theaters and there is right. like the performance art side right, of things, right, right. But, but typically this is all right. it's, it's commercial you know, it's pretty, advertising. Exactly, and it's like, you know, it's like a, a, selfie, uh, a selfie paradise with all those crazy mascots and, you know, People come here just to have like a trophy photo. The idea always was to have artists, guest clerk every day for three hours selling their own things they want. Sell books, sell magazines, sell prints, sell whatever. But the great part of it was that we got people that were connected to Times Square in some sort of way. Either artists who had history with Times Square, like Matt Weber who shot wonderful photos of Times Square back in the late 80s from his taxi cab. Um, we had Kimu sat here and drew amazing drawings of what he saw. Uh, Jason Pollins, another artist who did some illustrations based on what he saw in Times Square. Um, so just getting artists to interact with the space before this opened. So when they were here, there was a little bit of like a connection that we could kind of make. And almost everybody was New Yorker, so that was kind of an extra added bonus to the whole entire project. And I think the fact we have guests, artists every day that have a very wide variety of you know style generation has been great because every day you're like oh who's coming tomorrow oh this guy I love his work so it's been great because then we have also tourists that are like okay I have a reason to go to Times Square now because this guy from France is here or like oh I love this guy you know illustration as we start to understand or see their like reaction the dynamic we're like hey we have this this kind of like you know platform to do more than just selling magazine. Like, hey, why don't you, you know, why don't we review portfolio today? And then we did it and we start to have a line and then crazy, like, right? you know, at seven, we're like, sorry guys, you have to come back tomorrow. Then we're like, hey, today let's do career advisor. You know, like we have like all those great people that, you know, are always busy, like all the time, that all of a sudden you have like two editor in chief, you have some graffiti writers, some artists, and we're like, why not doing that today? We really love your art. I'm a big fan of what you do. Thank so, you. It's so nice it. to have you on the show. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. this is really special. I, I can't wait to see what's next. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Cool. Absolutely. Right. And you've had a couple of surprise visitors. Uh, Jeff Soto was here. Jeff Soto was amazing because Jeff showed up and at a point where we were actually doing portfolio reviews for art students. And when Jeff showed us, so, so the kids see him and like, 
So Jeff sat down, gave like technique tips to kids, and gave like super positive reinforcement and like real talk. Yeah. It was just perfect to have so here. Rad. Yeah, so, so cool. Rad. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here doing this. It's really exciting. I think what's really nice about it is that it's kind of like we create like this little bubble here. Like there's like this little bubble, like little existence here in Times Square where like kind of all of our friends are showing up and like in and out and kind of returning and coming back. And then there's people who are just like walking by, like super confused and ask us like, uh, do you guys have any cigarettes? Do you, do you have any water? <laughs> and like the best thing was like the first day, this guy walks by and guy looks at him and goes, uh, do you guys have a USA Today? First off, who asks for a USA Today? Like, he did. <laughs> yeah, oh my like, God. We were like, no, but there's a Marriott down the street. I'm sure they got the, Mm. They got the USA Today there. Mm. So yeah, it's um, fun. It's actually just been interacting with like more of like people who have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Kind of teaching them about Juxpose and victory and kind of grotesque and what everybody's doing. It's that's kind of been fun. Juxpose has been one of my favorite art magazines uh, since I really got into the the whole scene. I think a lot of people's introduction to this world um, and the magazines even that followed, I think, are inspired by what Juxpose has done. And so having the presence here in the center of, you know, New York City, which is the center of the art world. I mean, it's a wonderful, it's an exciting place to, to strike up. As much as it's like a, um, it's like an ode to print, and like an ode to like that kind of like, the, the, the feeling of like discovering things like every month through a magazine. It's also just kind of like in the spirit of meeting up with people and like, kind of going and finding your friends and kind of it's just like we're just trying to connect that, that kind of part of it that like is really important to our team like we were saying off camera it's just like being present going places like this is just kind of like another one of those things where we're just trying to get people just to kind of yeah. different people from different like graffiti and painters and pop surrealists and everybody just to kind of connect so beautiful there's a spirit to it that's been kind of it's outgrown our, even our initial idea for it which is amazing so Tell us about uh, the organization that helped put this series of events on. Yeah, so the Times Square Alliance, thank God, they've been so great because they they sought us out and they the, they're the ones that have to go through all the permitting. They're the ones that have to like kind of fight the good fight for us. But they've done such a wonderful job. They did the JR project in Times Square. They did the FAIL project in Times Square. Oh, Shamia. So they've done a really nice job of like trying to kind of find creative outlets in a space where I mean, it, this is a walking commercial, like we all know it. So it's just trying to trying to find like little creative pockets to find to do projects right. here, and kind of like remind people that there's all these wonderful playhouses around here. There's a lot of stuff happening, but maybe just like in the center, there could be a little bit more. And they're doing a wonderful job. Yeah, I mean, really in that light, like where all of these huge corporations are paying millions and millions of dollars to have representation right here in what's making it Times Square, and finding a spot for art in the center of that. Yeah. is a really beautiful thing that the organization is doing. Yeah, and like they've done such a good job, such like just in the latter part of this year, just such good things, yeah. and it's... Fail, that was so Fail good. was so good, and it was interactive, and right. like this too. Right, tell us about Victory uh, that, you're, that you're doing this with. So Victory Journal is a really great magazine that um, focuses on sports, but with what it really basically is, is like fine art sports, like beautiful like magnum photographers shooting spreads on sports, illustrators, and kind of like the history and art of um, sports and not just like right, the stuff we all know but like fencing and soccer and all that and so we, we we had kind of had some similar people we'd worked with Cheryl Dunn a shot for victory and juxtapose Boogie a shot for victory and, and juxtapose um, so it kind of just made sense that we kind of wanted to try some, like they're a New York based magazine so that's kind of how we just kind of made a connection and wanted to do this together excellent yeah I think it's a beautiful collaboration and then uh, Converse has also been very supportive in uh, I mean almost everything you guys do now yeah Converse has always just been a really good supporter of all of our like projects that we have that are kind of like outside of the print publication so um, they were gracious to help us out with building this for Miami and again for Times Square they were again really gracious for helping us and supporting uh, basically Kimu's dream project and Juxtapose is kind of dream project. So it was just really great to have them part of this as well. That's something I was thinking. So it's Miami Scope, the, the, the new was, stand. It was the original and, place. And, that and now, in. I don't know if you could think of a better place. You have it here in Times Square. Is there some place that's going next or can we see it pop up again? It's a little bit like to be continued right now because yeah. at this point, um, we would prefer not to have a United States. Yeah. It'd be kind of cool to take it outside of the United States. Go um, big or go home. And I think we just realized that scope was great, but as an installation piece, like in an art fair, it just it, 
can translate so much differently outside sure. now, as you can see. It's, it's a whole different experience. As much as I love scope, and you and I don't have any problem getting into scope, some people don't get to go to scope. Exactly. Uh, so come to a place with uh, the, the biggest city in the United States and yeah. right in the center of it. Go that. There's a huge uh, fight of mascots. A mascot fight? All right, play by play. Ah, oh, so what do we see happening here? Oh. Oh, those, gir those girls that aren't wearing clothes are in the middle of that. Did somebody get pinched? Oh, no. Okay, so this is the thing. Like, every day there's something like this that happens. And what is amazing is that the Frozen character never helps. <laughs> well, hey, man, Evan, thank you so much for being on the show. Obviously. Evan Frico, follow Juxpose. You probably already do. They're the best. Mask. No, 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 no fighting, guys. No fighting. I don't want to see any more of that. Um, that was a, what a trip. Uh, thank you, Evan, uh, for talking with us there. Um, congrats to you guys. The booth looked beautiful. Everything looked great. I can't wait to see where it goes next. Um, and thank you again for watching. Uh, if you guys uh, like the show, please like it, subscribe, follow, share it, uh, spread the word. Uh, we're doing them every week, and I want you guys to see more. So, enjoy. Buds for Sean, Duncan Leonard, Wicked Sean, Wicked Leonard, <laughs> Stella R. Sean. This Buds for Leonard. This reminds me of that scene from uh, from uh, the Usual Suspects, where you're just like naming things off of the things in the room. Well, that was the Usual Suspects, right? Yeah, Kaiser Sose, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I needed I a few know. new nicknames. I'll come back to Times Square. I think Duncan Leonard's what we're gonna go with. I'm into it, Duncan Leonard. You heard Leonard. it first, Evan. That's solid. Thanks again, man. Really love having awesome. you. Awesome. Yeah.